So let's talk about the Zealots. The, the Zealots were a group of Jewish radical freedom fighters, and they were eager to seek the Messiah. They were looking for the Messiah, and they believed, of course, that the Messiah was going to be a violent Messiah and was going to take back Israel by force from the Roman occupiers, and that then the kingdom of God would be restored and all things would come in due time but they wanted to speed things up by becoming rebellious, but by becoming it really splinter groups of zealots ended up be, becoming some of the world's very first, what we would dub today terrorists. As, as difficult as that may be to believe, we'll talk about one group in particular in a moment that would certainly fit that characterization. But the zealots were overall, while they had different splinter groups and had different beliefs and ideas about some things, uh, their main goal was to see the overthrow of the current system that existed. They wanted to overthrow it uh, by violent means if necessary, because they considered the occupation by Rome, uh, who they obviously viewed, you know, considered Gentiles, as being defiling to the presence of God in Israel and of the Jewish people and of the Jewish heritage and the Jewish culture. They said, this is our land and we do not want anybody on it. Uh, we do not want a defiling presence on it. We see that same idea today, right? Let's not think that the 21st century or the 20th century in some way, shape or form is really unique. Um, when it comes to the very basic elements of humanity and basic human psychology, where we have the same thing happening today, we can understand this when we look at places like Afghanistan, we look at places like Iraq, we look at places uh, in across the world who may have a foreign military occupying that country. And there are people in that country who respond in different ways. Some people say, it's okay with me as long as I leave my family alone. Others say, I really don't like the fact that they're here and I don't think I'm going to turn violent, but I might. And then you have others who say to heck with it and they pick up a gun and they say, we want to get rid of you and we want to get rid of you now. And that's exactly what was happening back then. It happens all through time. And of course, we tend to dub those people now, certainly in our time, who, who stand up to foreign occupation with military arms or you know, violently, we dub them now terrorists, right? Oftentimes, of course, it all depends who the occupying army is. I mean, to Rome, the zealots were terrorists, but, you know, to the Jewish people, to, to many of the Jewish people, the zealots were freedom fighters. There's a very big difference in those two words. And it all depends on which side of the fence that you're on. So we always have to understand that this is always going on throughout history. Uh, we see it today, we can very easily identify with the plight of the zealots when we think about our own modern times. Now, let's move on and talk about the, uh, where this kind of leads. And that is what we know about the zealots, we know mostly from the works of the Jewish historian Josephus, who was commissioned to write a history of the Jews. And when he did, he identified a, a very extreme group in his history, uh, known as the Sakari. And this right here that you're seeing now is actually what we would call a Sakari dagger. It's actually a small knife that does the job that it was designed to accomplish very well. Uh, by the way, Sakari comes from the Latin word for uh, dagger. In Sika, uh, it, basically what it means is assassins or murderers. So these Sakari uh, were dagger men, in essence, what they were. They carried out murders and assassinations, and they used short daggers to do it. So they were very scary people. You do not want to run into one of these guys and be sympathetic to the Roman Empire. In fact, the Sicaris, according to Josephus, considered anything except constant, full-scale conflict with the Roman Empire as collaboration. And to the Sicarii, collaboration with Roman infiltrators was an act worthy of death. And they were particularly gruesome with how they would slay their victims. They would do it in the middle of the city in broad daylight. 
uh, hiding their knives beneath their robes, roaming the streets to attack Roman collaborators, right, among the Jews. We, we really see the rise of the Sicarii in about 50 AD. It's a little after the time of Jesus. Uh, but about the time of 50 AD, I mean, remember, Rome comes in at about 40 BC, begins to occupy the region. But it wasn't really about, until about 90 years later, about 50 AD, when the Jewish resistance to Roman rule really began to turn violent. And the Sicarii were just one of those uh, several violent Jewish zealot groups. And the Sicarii really start off the whole thing with a, with a bang by their, having their very first victim be none other than the high priest of the Jewish temple. Uh, which, by the way, they will later hijack and use as their base of operations for a period of time around the time of the first Jewish-Roman War. But the Zakari's first victim was the high priest of the Jewish temple, who they considered, obviously, to be a traitor to true Judaism. So they went on to murder and uh, stabbing in the middle of broad daylight. It was very terrorizing to the people. They were very scared of the Sicarii. I would imagine it would be akin to modern day terrorism today is how it would feel. But um, they would also kidnap for ransom wealthy merchants, which that was a nice way to raise revenue is they would simply kidnap wealthy merchants and uh, use it to you know, uh, gain more money and fill the treasury even more to continue their acts of terror. Uh, so they attacked many different people uh, across time. And by the time we get into the time of about 66 AD, uh, this is the time of the Great Revolt, uh, and it ends up being the first of about three different uh, revolts uh, between the Jews and Rome. And really, you know, Judea, this, this province, is one of the most renegade provinces to the Roman Empire. It's one of these, although they had others as well, but, but Judea was in particular uh, a very naughty province to the Roman Empire. And so they, they constantly had to be dealing with this uh, rogue territory. Uh, I'm sure they viewed it in their mind. But we won't go into uh, all of that. And there, of course, there's many other things we could talk about with, with uh, zealots and their history. But the primary thing we want to get across is that the, the zealots had openly and publicly declared war on Rome. And they certainly had a popularity amongst the people uh, of Judaism and the people in this area. Because some people were very tired of the Roman presence. Not everybody, because people respond differently. Not everybody responds the same way. Now, in our modern time, where we have television and we have internet, you know, we can all be told to believe something very quickly, right? We can be convinced and deceived very simply through television or whatever. But back in these days, remember, there was, not, there, there was great connection, certainly in the city, but word did not travel as fast uh, about so many different ideas uh, as it does today. 